What up, Doke Hunters? We have maintenance coming up tonight. And as you can obviously tell, I am no longer grounded. So ASMR mode is gone. You're going to have to deal with the mature tune again. So in this video, we're going to be discussing maintenance and what you guys can do to prepare for it. We're going to talk about what we can expect from the maintenance. And we're going to discuss Daima because there is potentially some major news coming to Dokkan or Daima within about a week. So I want to discuss that as well. But let's start with the maintenance. When is it going to be happening? It's going to be happening in a couple of hours. It's going to be happening actually at the upcoming Global's Daily Reset. September 30th at 1700 hours, which is 5 p.m. PDT for me. It's going to be going for seven hours, the maintenance, and then we'll be coming out of it at the start of October 1st. If you want to check exactly what time it happens for you, check your own in-game news, click on the news, go to other, and it shows you right there. For me, it's 5 p.m. till midnight. What is the purpose of preparing for maintenance? Well, normally, actually recently, we've been getting a lot of maintenances that happen a couple of hours into the new reset, meaning players get to use their stamina on the new content or on the new daily missions before we shut down. But for this one, you're not going to have that luxury. And the reason why I'd like to promote people to burn up their stamina is because as you guys have seen recently, Dokkan tends to do stupid things at random times. The most recent example is that Global was iced out of the new content for part three of, was it part three? It was the second half of the part three worldwide celebration content. We were iced out for 15 minutes because they forgot to give us a data download, something like that. So Dokkan has done dumber things in the past. And most importantly, when it comes to maintenances, they have broken things in maintenance several times. And when that happens, sometimes the maintenances get extended by hours, maybe even up to eight hours, 12 hours. It can get pretty crazy. So the less stamina you have going in, the more free stamina you get coming out. That's ultimately the point, especially since this worldwide celebration has cut down the stamina recharge rate. It recharges your stamina that much quicker. So the less stamina you have, the more there is to grow and it's going to be happening at a much quicker rate. So for example, for me, with my power level bonus reducing the stamina recharge time and the worldwide celebration also doing it, my recharge time is every two minutes. So every two minutes, I get a point. I have a total of 392 stamina. So if we were to factor in how many minutes we're going to be down for maintenance, seven hours, seven times 60 is 420. So 420 divided by two minutes means 210. So after 420 minutes, I will have gained 210 stamina. Thankfully, with how much I have here, I will still be okay. But for some people who maybe have less stamina or maybe who just don't bother, all of that potential stamina will be lost. So it's always a good idea to capitalize on these things because anytime a gacha game has the opportunity to give you stuff for free, you want to take it. Free action, in my opinion, is a, is a precious resource. The ability to not have to burn meat as soon as you jump back into the game, I think is a good idea. So how do you do this? Since there's not going to be any daily missions available, any new content, what I recommend that people do is to actually use the Natade Village Crystal event where you can farm up the crystals to buy those items from the Baba Shop. I've already done multiple videos on this. Not only is this effective for buying a bunch of free stuff, free dragon stones, free unique equips, a bunch of training items and medals and things like that, but also the link level rate on this event is actually very good. In fact, I'm going to run through it once. I have basically all nines on these units. I kind of want to see if we're going to get one. This event Let's is this. so effective that it's actually four times as effective as the best quest stage right now. Granted, it's only one fight. You are burning 25 stamina. So the upside is higher link level rates. The downside, you burn your stamina like crazy very quickly. In perspective, compared to the Roshi event, it is a little over half as good. Roshi's link level rate is seven. This link level rate is four. Roshi's event is limited to one to two runs per day. This event can be done infinitely if your stamina allows you to do it. Okay, so we didn't get anything there. But this is a great way to burn up your stamina, get some more crystals. If you didn't buy some of the items from the Baba Shop because it just took too long, you can do some of that and buy some of those things and just kind of get a little bit more out of it while you do it. I'm going to go ahead and do more of this because I just want to see if I can get more. I want to burn up my stamina anyway. So that is this is the best way to do it. I don't think any story event is going to be necessary. Do it this way. In my experience, with almost 400 stamina, doing this and how quickly it goes, it takes me like 15 minutes tops to burn up the entire stamina bar. This is not going to take me very long. I mean, you're seeing how fast this all goes, right? So it will not take you long at all. So if you are short on time and you got to burn up at least like 80 stamina, you'll be okay. This event will te definitely take care of it. I have all nines and yeah, we're getting kind of unlucky. I am not. I don't think I'm selling this very well. So I'm going to continue doing that while I record the rest of this video. So in terms of what we can expect, the easy answer 
is everything from this video we can expect. Um, it may not all happen for a couple of reasons that I will elaborate on, but in summation, Gogeta, yes. Janemba, yes. Memorable battles, yes. And then also the Vegeta Dokkan Festival stuff. People are thinking that we could be getting some more... Stupid Elon. People are, People are saying that we could be getting more than just Mike the Gogeta Janemba. <laughs> we could be getting more than these two EZAs, and that's always possible. The reason why I think it's not going to happen is because based on the way that they phrased it and based on the fact that they opened the statement with the Garlic Jr. wallpaper being part of the countdown, I think they are truly ending worldwide as a bookend with a non Broly movie. Like the Fusion Reborn is what they're doing just because there's not a whole lot of stuff to include from Bio Broly anyway. Yes, we could have had a tech hair Krillin EZA, sure. Uh, will it happen? It's possible. But I think because of that, they're probably wanting to do a little bit more because otherwise anyone like who, anyone who really just thinks about it, you start with legendary Super Saiyan Broly, second coming Broly, and then what's happening with my music? Oh, sorry. My music just glitched. Sorry. Uh, anyone who knows like the movies, you start with legendary Super Saiyan Broly. Fantastic. A lot of stuff. Second coming Broly. A lot of stuff. Bio Broly, meh, not so much. So... Yeah, they would have had to do this anyway. I don't think we're going to getting, be getting any more stuff, but the data download will confirm it for us. Uh, on top of this, Vegeta assets, Kui assets, their medals, any like maybe Dokkan event medals, things like that, that will probably also be in there and uh, whatever else they feel like including in the celebration. What I don't think will be in there is some of this stuff. You mother... Okay. Uh, some of this stuff right here. Uh, well, actually, you know what? The warm-up... Why does this thing keep? Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, you know what? We might get this. We might get Bardock's e uh, Dokkan Awakening. That might also be in there. Um, what I don't think we're going to get is the UI update stuff. I don't think we're going to be seeing this. I don't think we're going to be seeing all of this. The reason why I don't think we're going to be seeing these is because normally this would come with like a, an update. We were not given an announcement for a potential update coming up. So I think this might potentially be something that drops closer to maybe next week or the week after, if anything, because that is still within the confines of October. Of course, it is possible we get it at the beginning of October, but since we have the entire month to get it, I think the point of that is any time during this block, they can do it. And I'm inclined to think it's going to be next week. Another reason why I think it could be next week is because of the upcoming diamond news that I want to share with you guys. But before we do that, uh, one more thing. This stuff, I think we could also see in here, or this could also be a part of the update from next week, which is the anniversary warm-up coins, this whole like tour through the anniversaries. I still, I kind of want to do another video discussing this, but basically like what I'm thinking, based on what they said, they said like characters from these various anniversaries are going to get a boost, a temporary boost. That can't mean an easy A because an easy A wouldn't be temporary. That would be kind of messed up. What I think this is probably going to mean is that there's going to be some like maybe some extra missions for certain events and those missions can be done a heck of a lot easier if you have the relevant anniversary characters or if you don't have those characters those events will be much tougher those missions will be much tougher I feel like that's probably what this is going to be maybe we get something with this as far as assets in the data download I would not expect all this I think this is more of a next week thing so now let's talk about the next week stuff why is Toon rambling about something that could be coming up next week? Well, because apparently there is a big time event happening in Tokyo Big Sight on October 6th, which coincidentally enough is one day before Sparking Zero's early release, which is going to be nuts. But Dragon Ball Daimatsuri, this is an event that is to be held at Tokyo Big Sight October 6th, is going to be going over some Daima stuff. It's a free invite only event. Three screenings will be done in for the world premiere of Daima's episode one. The legend herself, Masako Nozawa, will be there. Benyu will have the booths. We'll have booths for several Dragon Ball games, including Sparking Zero. A main stage will be held to reveal the latest information on several games. So we have the schedule according to Air Dokkan, which this looks so official. Why did Air Dokkan make this? And why did they not make it? But whatever. Uh, this is what the schedule apparently is. Daima first screening is at the beginning. Um, we obviously will not be able to watch that. I might go live to just react to all of these things, but we have Sparking, then we have Super Divers. Super Divers, for those of you who don't know, I talked about this uh, 
a couple of times, but I haven't made a video on it. Super Divers is now going to be the successor to Dragon Ball Heroes. The old arcade game got like a visual technical upgrade and they basically retcon and reset the franchise. And it's now Super Divers. A lot of people were unsure if this was going to be transitioning into Dokkan in terms of like hero stuff. We're getting heroes this year. Will it happen after that? We don't know. But that will also probably be one of the demos as they show right here. So one hour after sparking, Super Divers. Then the next screening for Daima Episode 1. Then we have the... Oh, the card game, Fusion World, of course. Why did I not think of that? Okay, so that is also probably going to receive a demo or something. Maybe like some new cards or something like that. So that'll be happening after the second screening. And then Dokkan and Legends. I don't imagine these are going to be getting like playable demos because this is a mobile game. They don't want people, you know all over their phones they're probably just going to give us information and what they're probably going to tell us is what's going to be coming up for these two games in terms of a daima crossover we already have traces of daima already on legends because legends has a daima login screen or something like that so we know that both versions are going to be getting some sort of daima representation be it a collaboration with a story event free to play uh free to play character maybe like one of those collectible units that you can sell for zenny like they did for Sandland, who knows what they're going to do. This is where we're going to find out. And I think with this, you know, ultimately when they announce this and then when it drops, I think that will probably be a more sensible place to give us this stuff and maybe even Bardock and then like all of these things here. So uh, I will try to, I mean, if there's going to be a live stream or something, I'll try to watch and react to it live. Otherwise, I will do a video breaking this stuff down. The reason why this could potentially impact the summonable side is because if we look at this, the block for the Autumn Dokkan Festival is October 1st to October 18th. This is a rough window from last year. This might be different. It might just be straight up two weeks. It might be October 1st to October 15th. Or maybe it might even be sooner than that, October 1st to October 11th, because October 11th is when Sparking comes out. Actually, you know what? Daima is October 11th. Sparking is October 7th if you factor in early release, which we should. So... Yeah, if Daima comes out October 11th, that would be perfectly timed for a potential summonable part two LR. Because Vegeta is the unit for part one, I personally want it to be Zarbon for part two. Not that most people are going to be summoning for these two units anyway. Like, even though Vegeta looks to be probably the best TUR in the game now, he's not very meta relevant in terms of some of the more competing teams. So people may not summon. People may not summon for part two. So... I don't know if they're going to use it as an opportunity to make Daima a summonable character. I don't even know. It Does it make sense for them uh, financially to release a licensed character for uh, for a part two legendary summon? I'm not so sure. Will it even be a legendary summon? Will it be just another Dokkan festival? We don't know. So all of those bits of information will only be revealed at something like this or on a future data download. So just keep that in the back of your mind. We might not necessarily go the way that I've written things out here because this is all just tentative. These are all placeholders from last year. And we all know Dokkan does the most unpredictable things all the time. So nothing we expect or anticipate or assume could ever end ultimately happen the way that it's supposed to. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Let me once again remind people, Sparking Zero is coming out October 7th on early release. I am going to be playing this game. I'm going to be covering this game on the main channel. Now, one thing I can tell you is I will not be covering this game on the main channel in the same way that I covered Dokkan. Dokkan, I cover essentially every facet of the game. I do news update videos. I do, uh, you know, gameplay showcases, like every, every facet of the game that I can do, I do. But now with Sparking coming out, the emphasis on Sparking is going to be more so production value, editing, making the videos more entertaining and more complete overall. Something that I used to do with Dokkan, but I haven't since had time. I have assembled a team of talented individuals and I'm hoping that this can work out. So hopefully you guys look forward and you guys enjoy the Sparking Zero content. This is going to be a forever mainstay on the channel. I truly uh, enjoy the, uh, the, the, the Budokai Tenkaichi games, the Budokai games. I want to play these sorts of games again. So I am going to be making some some dope content for it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys stick around. Uh, this will impact Dokkan in a sense where there will at least be one video every day, hopefully for Sparking. So that means that there will probably have to be more consolidation for Dokkan stuff into one video. Like if I were to do multiple stages of a certain challenge of it, maybe I put it all into one video as opposed to dropping five, six videos a day because I want to give the sparking video some time to breathe. So in terms of like content rollout strategy, I don't need to you know bore you guys with all that stuff, but I just want to let you know sparking is coming. I will be covering it. You guys are going to love it. It's going to be a lot of fun.
So look forward to that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like down below. Let in the comments your thoughts on the upcoming Daima series. Are you guys looking forward to it? Do you think that having a summonable character release at the same time as Sparking's like first episode, is that good for the anime? Is it good for Dokkan? Is it better to have it be a free to play, like a parallel celebration while we have other content as a replacement? Let me know your overall thoughts. What do you guys anticipate in the data download tonight? Is there anything else that I missed? Feel free to share it in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe for more Dokkan content of the future and click the notification bell so that you'll let YouTube know you go to see more of my stuff. Do it. Thanks again. Stay tuned and ours to Dokkan responsibly.